Deep sea mining for valuable minerals could be about to take off in a big way, and China is best placed to take advantage of the highly controversial practice. Here's the story. A deep sea gold rush led by China could soon have catastrophic consequences for marine ecosystems, according to the Hong Kong Free Press. When shifting tectonic plates create hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean, these vents interact with seawater to create polymetallic nodules, polymetallic sulfides, and ferromanganese crusts rich in valuable minerals such as cobalt and nickel, which are used in many forms of green technology and mobile phones. However, mining is seen as a major risk to the countless unknown species that live in these areas, and in June, more than 350 scientists signed a petition calling for a moratorium until robust scientific information has been obtained. This came in response to the Pacific Island nation of Nauru activating a legal trigger to allow a Canadian company to start mining in two years' time, even if a key mining code of practice developed by the UN is not in place by then. And that is where China comes in. Critics argue the precedent could cause a Wild West-style gold rush, and the Hong Kong Free Press reports that the China is best placed to take advantage of one for three reasons. First, because it is the first country in the world to sponsor and maintain contracts for exploring all three types of mineral resources in the international seabed area. Second, because of the 30 contracts the UN's International Seabed Authority has so far issued to explore the seabed, Chinese companies hold five more than anyone else. And finally, because of the nation's powerful position in relation to that international seabed authority, where the U.S. is not represented because it has not ratified the Law of the Sea Convention. The issue is of course wider than any one country though. The UN's International Seabed Authority has previously been accused of corporate capture, as well as lacking transparency, independent scrutiny, and scientific credibility. And, regardless of China's role or any potential advantages to deep sea mining, getting into it without proper rules is bad news for the planet. Our oceans are emptying of fish, and this week a crucial meeting is taking place to decide if we should continue to self-destruct or stop. Here's what you need to know. The WTO's 12th Ministerial Conference is meeting this week in an attempt to end 20 years of negotiations over harmful fishing subsidies, responding to the reality that global fish production is currently nine times higher than it was in 1950, and over 34% of the world's assessed fish stocks are being overfished, according to the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization. The primary issue at stake here is that much of the fishing behind those figures is economically unviable and thus is being effectively propped up by massive government subsidies, according to the UN Secretary General's Special Envoy for the Ocean Writing on the World Economic Forum's website. The current draft text of a deal is designed to eliminate subsidies that contribute to overcapacity or overfishing, as well as facilitating illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, which is rife in the industry. It attempts to do this by blocking payments for the construction or upgrading of vessels or contributions to costs of fuel, for instance. India's Financial Express says any agreement over a final text is being publicly challenged by New Delhi, which says the current draft favors countries with already established distant water fishing industries. As an alternative, India is proposing developed countries that fish outside of their own waters should not be able to provide fishery subsidies for 25 years, while developing countries are given more time to comply with restrictions. In pushing for the total removal of harmful subsidies, the UN Secretary General's Special Envoy for the Ocean points out that large-scale fishing fleets are pushing out smaller operations, and that if we were to remove all harmful fishery subsidies, we could have a 12.5% increase in fish biomass by 2050, to the benefit of those smaller operations. Scientists say more than 70% of the world's sharks and rays disappeared from the ocean between 1970 and 2018, in large part due to overfishing, and more than three-quarters of shark species are now threatened with extinction. According to a study published in the journal Nature, there are 31 species of oceanic sharks and rays. Of these, three are critically endangered and 13 are endangered. Eight are listed as vulnerable and one as near-threatened. Only six are classified as of least concern. The three critically endangered species are the oceanic white-tipped shark, the scalloped hammerhead, and the great hammerhead. Their populations have declined by more than 80%. Among the 13 endangered species are the pelagic thresher, dusky shark, the short-fin mako, and the long-fin mako. 
However, citing Shark Advocates International, BBC News reports that a couple of species, including the great white, are beginning to recover due to science-based catch limits. The study in Nature attributes the declines to decades of overfishing, notably longline fishing. Long lines can stretch to 100 kilometers and catch fish and other wildlife indiscriminately. There has been a two-fold increase in the use of long lines over the past half century. This fishing technique now snares three times as many sharks. Tensions in the South China Sea are escalating, as China and its neighbors increasingly use commercial fishing vessels and warships to stake hotly disputed territorial claims and harvest one of the world's most fragile fishing grounds. China claims more than 80 percent of the sea, and it bases that claim on a 70-year-old map that marks its territory with nine dashes that reaches down 1,800 kilometers from its southern island of Hainan. The UN has recently ruled that this claim is invalid, but this has only made China more aggressive in enforcing its claim. This claim-staking contest is now having severe repercussions, as fishermen are reporting dwindling fish stocks after China subsidized its massive fishing fleet with billions of dollars, which led to overfishing, and the destructive of coral reefs, which are vital to the fast regeneration of fish stocks. According to marine biologist Professor John McManus from the University of Miami, he said there are about 570 species of coral in the region, and these bring thousands of species of fish. However, scientists like McManus now predict that this whole ecosystem will collapse under the weight of overfishing and the coral destruction caused by China's construction of new military bases on top of coral reefs. More than 104 square kilometers of coral reef has also been destroyed by giant clam poachers who use boat propellers to hack apart coral reefs and pry out the giant clams, which are a delicacy in China. Another 57 square kilometers have been destroyed by China's base-building activities. The ocean around the South Atlantic island of Tristan da Cunha is said to become a fishing war zone as it has been declared a marine wildlife sanctuary by the island's government. The move is designed to protect the area's wildlife and fish populations, which means it would be one of the last parts of the world's oceans that would contain large fish stocks. This would make it an irresistible target for the world's long-range fishing boats, which have overfished most of the world's oceans, leading to diminished fish populations globally. China's large fleet of long-range fishing boats are particularly infamous for their long history of poaching fish from nations as far away from China as South Africa and Argentina. According to The Guardian, the protected area is huge, three times the size of the UK, and the UK government would be responsible for enforcing the new no-fishing law. In a statement, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson called on other nations to join Britain in its ambition to protect 30 percent of the world's oceans. He said, we are in danger of killing our seas. Everyone's favorite womanizer, Leonardo DiCaprio, is trying to get the public involved in putting fish back into our oceans with a little help from technology. The actor unveiled Global Fishing Watch, the digital brainchild of tech environmentalist group SkyTruth, nonprofit organization Oceana, and Google. The free tool allows people to track fishing activity worldwide in a bid to curb the exploitation of marine life. Here's how it works. When large vessels at sea broadcast radio signals through the automatic identification system, satellites pick up the signals and store them in a database. Global Fishing Watch then analyzes vessel movements to determine the type of ship and fishing gear. Ship positions are delayed by 72 hours, but can be tracked from as far back as January 2012. Information is displayed on an interactive Google Earth map and includes countries' exclusive economic zones and protected areas, as well as the individual records and identities of more than 35,000 fishing boats. With commercial vessel movements exposed to public view, users are able to remotely monitor any ships that could be fishing illegally. The system is far from perfect. Smaller vessels that don't require the use of the Automatic Identification System, or AIS, can't be tracked, and the AIS itself can report false locations when tampered with by a crew trying to mask illegal activities. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.